Hello, this is Landon from Design Visionaries, and in this video I'd like to show you the fill surface command using fit to curves. Uh, what I have here is an attempt to make a basic motorcycle sh uh, helmet shape. Uh, I had brought in some raster images. Uh, let me show you. And I put the curve, I made some curves around this and tried to do it with a through curve mesh. And despite my efforts to uh, put this together, it did come out a little weird on the top. It wasn't joining properly. So um, for this particular model, um, I wanted to use an alternative way to stitch together these curves and the surfaces uh, that looked much cleaner. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hide that and show you that you there, the alternative to using through curve mesh is you can use fill surface. Um, now fill surface allows me to, let me just remove these to show you. Uh, it basically allows me to do, it works similar to end-sided surface used to, used to work. So uh, it basically makes a trimmed surface from a set of curves you supply to it. And we'll just turn that off for a second so I can show you. Uh, I will select the first set of uh, boundary curves that I want to use to generate the surface with. So let me just choose all these like so. <clears throat> and as you can see, it makes it makes a nice surface. Um, it doesn't, it's not tangent or anything. It just tries to generate the surface through the boundary curve that you supply. Um, similar to how end-sided surface had some constraints, this does allow you to give the fit to curves option, and it will attempt to fit the surface to curves like cross curves that you uh, supply to it. So if I were to choose some cross curves, um, it'll start building the surface to match what I, what, the, what I try to supply it with. Now that already looks much better than what I was doing with through curve mesh. And um, I was trying with through, through curve mesh and there's just so much I have to select um, that a single misclick or the wrong vector and, and just trying to find it can be very tedious and problematic and using fill surface really simplifies the process. You can do a little bit of it at a time and actually see the changes and make some changes to the tolerance. So if I wanted to increase the tolerance to say two, uh, it smooths out that surface so much more and makes it easier to uh, start cutting out and detailing the uh, shape of this helmet. So if I were to go through and just, you know, uh, do each side of this, so I'll just do another fill surface like so. Um, put the, let me just select all these. And this, and we'll just go through. And what's really awesome about this is, uh, you know, when you're doing through curve mesh, each one of these curve vectors and cross curves, uh, their vectors have to match, and, and it has to be a very uh, specific order in how you select the curves, and it can be troublesome because you have to redo the whole feature. And this, you can kind of do these in an arbitrary manner. Like, I could select the bottom one here, pick the top one, pick the middle, I say, oh, this one, and then that one, and bam, you know, and, and it still comes out. And then you know, oh, I, I see some of the same issues I was seeing in the through curve mesh. So let me just, hey, I'll raise the tolerance up like that. And bam, you know, it, it smooths it out. And I didn't have that ability in through curve mesh to do that as easily as I do here. So as you can see, that's that looks so much nicer. And then I can just go around and repeat it, or I can just mirror what I already have. So if I just open this and... Do uh, an, oh, not raster image. Let's turn on the uh, the sheet bodies, except for the through curve mesh. Actually, I'll just delete. This. Well, I'll hide it for now so I can do a comparison. But yeah, as you can see, that looks much nicer. I can come in here and say, oh, I'm gonna move the tolerance up just a little bit more. I want these two sides to be pretty nice and make sure they match. That way, the 
the edges match perfectly. And as you can see, that's that's really nice and smooth. Um, if I wanted, I could actually go back into my history. If I said make this current feature, let's just hide that for a second. I uh, say I took a, a studio spline, for instance, uh, just real quick, and said, oh, you know what, that that area right in between here, it's it's not as good as I'd like. I could just go through and and oh, let me turn closed off. And uh, so, you know, I just, I need something to kind of just tell it, hey, it needs to, it needs to go along this um, area right here. Oh, that got a little goofy, didn't it? <laughs> oh, I wonder what happened there. Maybe I should start from that side. Um, so if I just go here to here to here, here. Turn off closed. There, that looks actually better. Um, and then just, you know, I think this is very view dependent. So when I start changing views, this gets a little goofy. Yeah. So I may have to um, use like a, a join curve or something like that, or bridge curve probably to get that all the way down. Um, but essentially, let me just show, let me go back to this and current feature. And I'll just, I'll just go ahead and mirror this mirror feature, mirror geometry. So we'll just mirror this and this, uh, across this plane here, like so. And there does appear to be a little bit of a seam here. So that's something you could go in and, uh, say, oh, you know what? Um, whoops, let me just go ahead and edit that. So, you know, they do end here. Maybe I should have just, whoops, should have just gave it that. And see, you can already see the surface begin to change because it sees the tangency now of that curve. And, and it tries to smooth it out and follow that like so. Let me just change that. And yeah, so you can already see the smoothness up here. I should probably do the same thing on the back one. Just tell it to uh, utilize the other side of this curve. Oops, no, I didn't want that. We go here and say, you know what? You just utilize the entirety of the curve to make it continuous so that it looks smooth when I mirror it. There we go. Hit OK. And now it's all mirrored and it looks much smoother. Um, I think that I needed to do that here as well. As you can see, it didn't smooth out the sides. Oh, what happened there? Oh, did I pick the wrong curve? Uh, try a lower continuity level. Oh, let's see. Likes those. Maybe I need to start up here. Huh. I just had to pick it in a different order. All right. Hit OK. And then just do the same thing on this side. Oh, I see what happened. I did have one picked there. Didn't realize it. And just do that, 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 and that. And now it should be nice and smooth across here. Uh, so now it looks like the front didn't pick. It doesn't quite meet this side like I'd like it to. So perhaps I need to turn down this a little bit and force it to come out and meet that a little more. Right there. And I just got to find a good balance between it, essentially. There we go. Oh. I guess it doesn't like that. All right. There we go. Might be okay in the back. So now we'll just turn off all the sketches and curves real quick. Give that a look. And then finally, turn those sketches back on. Turn that back on. And we'll just do one more fill surface on the bottom, right here, and go all the way 
Um, crossed. I have to pick the edge on this one. So I don't have the curves on that side. There we are. And I'm not going to worry about that. Set to none. And... Oh. Did I pick the wrong? There we go. So then I can just trim that if I need to. And we'll just say... We'll trim that later. But for now... We're going to go and sew this together. So we'll do a sew. We'll say this surface, this, 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 and this. Sew it all together. And then we'll just go ahead and do a, uh, we'll do a sketch on this plane. And I do want to just trim it along right here. Probably about there. Finish, and then we'll just extrude that all the way out uh, symmetrically. And we'll do a trim body. Trim this body along this plane. Hit OK. We'll do a delete body. We don't need this anymore. And it's a solid now, as you can see. So I just use so to make it a solid. And then I can do a, hopefully, I can just do a simple shell. Nope. There we are. So now I can do a nice shell on the body and make it hollow. And there we have it. We'll just turn off the images, curve the sketches, and date them. And there we have it. Uh, I essentially created the motorcycle helmet shape. Um, it would have been nice to have a top view to work with, and then probably adding some more control curves uh, in between here to just go along to maybe straighten that out so there's not this kind of um, uh, skull shape in here. Uh, but again, that's this is Landon from Design Visionaries, and this is essentially how to use fill surface in the place of through curb mesh. Uh, let's go ahead and bring that back in. I just want to show you, and we'll just do a side by side comparison. Let's just go move object, and we'll just say move original over here, and see if that lets me get away with that. I don't know if it's going to, it's probably going to move the, ah, I think I have to make a copy and hide the original for this one to work. So, actually, I think I can just go this, do feature faces, you, I'll just move it over here. Should be able to move the whole thing. There we go. Yep. All right. Let's see the side-by-side -side comparison. There we go. So, as you can see, uh, the fill surface version uh, still retains some of the some of the front stuff still came out the same, but areas up here uh, it had a harder time with, and I was able to correct that and make it much smoother by going in the fill surface with control curves. So again, this is the uh, fill surface versus through curve mesh. Uh, if you're running into troubles with through curve mesh, there is always the option to use uh, fill surface to generate uh, the same kind of thing with less of a hassle. You don't have to worry about tangencies quite as much on the generation portion of it. Um, and you can basically make the exact thing in fill surface um, you may have to use a few more features, but you're not uh, constrained to having to select and make sure that every single curve is selected properly in the right direction, in the right order, going clockwise or counterclockwise. So, you know, that, that takes a lot of the um, 
strain and difficulty out of uh, generating a surface from that. So again, uh, for more tips, tricks, and videos like this, please check us out at NX Tutorials. Um, designvisionaries.com. Um, also subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you.